Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on light and color. The topic of this video is the electromagnetic and visible light spectrum, and we want to know how are the various regions of the electromagnetic spectrum organized with respect to wavelength, frequency, and energy, and how are frequency and wavelength related for the various colors of the visible light spectrum. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. A vibrating charge creates an electric and magnetic field that travel outwards from the source of vibration. The intensity of the electric and magnetic field vary over time and space in a sinusoidal manner as shown in this animation. These fluctuations in electric and magnetic field are what we refer to as an electromagnetic wave. An electromagnetic wave is quite different than a mechanical wave. A mechanical wave is produced when a particle of a medium is set into vibrational motion. That particle forces neighboring particles to begin vibrating, and a mechanical wave can propagate through the medium. A mechanical wave, though, is dependent upon particle vibrations and thus cannot move through a region void of matter. They don't move through a vacuum. Electromagnetic waves are quite different than this. They can travel through a vacuum because they don't require physical matter in order to propagate. An electromagnetic wave can also travel through a solid, a liquid, and a gas. Electromagnetic waves exist with a vast range of frequencies which we refer to as the electromagnetic spectrum. The spectrum is further subdivided into regions with waves in each region having similar behaviors and uses. This diagram portrays the electromagnetic spectrum with the various regions labeled. The wavelength of an electromagnetic wave varies inversely with frequency, and the energy varies directly with frequency. The speed the speed of an electromagnetic wave is independent of its wavelength and frequency, independent only upon the, upon the material through which the wave is traveling. So EM waves all have the same speed when traveling through the same medium. The electromagnetic spectrum is organized according to frequency, wavelength, and energy. The left end, or radio wave region, has the lowest frequency and energy, and the gamma rays have the highest frequency and energy. Since wavelength is inversely proportional to frequency, the longer wavelength end is the low frequency end, that is the radio wave region, and the shortest wavelength end is the gamma ray region. The behavior of an electromagnetic wave is dependent upon its wavelength, frequency, and energy. As an example, let's consider the long wavelength region of radio waves. We understand that waves can undergo diffraction, that is, they're able to bend around obstacles in their path and even pass through openings. The ability of a wave to diffract is dependent upon wavelength, with longer wavelength waves having a greater ability to diffract. For this reason, the long wavelength radio waves waves are commonly used in communication devices such as cell phones. Their ability to diffract around buildings and bend through openings makes them perfect for the use of communication. As a second example, let's consider x-rays. Their high frequency and high energy give them the ability to pass through objects. For instance, x-rays can pass through much of the tissue of our body but are blocked by, t by our teeth and our bones. For this reason, x-rays are commonly used in medical imaging. As a third example, let's consider the ability of an electromagnetic wave to ionize an atom. Ionization is the process of removing an electron from an atom. A wave must have sufficient energy to do this. The ultraviolet X-ray and gamma ray region of the electromagnetic spectrum possesses sufficient energy in order to ionize atoms. As such, they can do damage to the cells of our body and even the DNA and genetic material of our body, thus causing the potential for mutations. On the other hand, visible light and all the regions to the left and lower frequency and energy of visible light are considered non-ionizing forms of radiation. They are not believed to do damage to our body. As mentioned previously, the electromagnetic spectrum consists of a vast range of frequencies. There are waves in the gamma ray region that have frequency values that are 24 
powers of 10 greater than the frequency values of some waves within the radio wave section. Amidst this vast range of frequencies, there's a tiny sliver of frequencies that the human eye is sensitive to. We refer to this region as the visible light region, and it's found wedged in between the infrared and the ultraviolet regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. The visible light region consists of colors with each color associated with a wave Wavelength. We can remember the ordering of the colors by the name Roy G. Bibb, where each letter of Roy's name is associated with the color red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. The longer wavelength, shorter frequency colors are the red waves. They're found next to the infrared region of the EM spectrum. And the shorter wavelength, higher frequency waves are the violet waves, and they're found located next to the ultraviolet region of the EM spectrum. We often refer to visible light as white light since the presence of all the wavelengths of the visible light spectrum is perceived by our eye to be white. If we pass white light through a triangular prism, as shown in the animation above, the white light will be dispersed or separated out into its individual colors. Since the ability of a wave to undergo refraction as it passes through the triangular prism is dependent upon wavelength, we understand Understand that each color is associated with its own wavelength or range of wavelength. We also understand from an animation such as this that white light is associated with the presence of all of the colors of the visible light spectrum. To give you a feel for the range of wavelengths in the visible light spectrum, the color red is associated with the longer wavelengths and it has wavelength values of approximately 720 nanometers and the color violet is the shorter wavelength color and it has wavelength values around 420 nanometers. A nanometer is a very small unit of distance equivalent to one billionth of a meter. So if white light is the presence of all of the colors of the visible light spectrum, what would black be? Well, black is simply the absence of all of the colors of the visible light spectrum. If there's no light, it appears dark to our eye, and thus we refer to that as black. To review, the electromagnetic spectrum consists of regions. The radio wave region on the left is the region with the longest wavelength waves and the lowest frequency and energy waves. As you progress from the radio wave region over to the gamma ray region, the wavelength gradually decreases and the frequency and energy values increase. The gamma ray region of the EM spectrum consist of waves with the highest frequency and energy and the shortest wavelengths. Wedged in between the infrared region and the ultraviolet region is the visible light region. The visible light region is a range of wavelengths and colors. The red waves of the visible light region have the longest wavelength and the lowest frequency and energy. As you progress from red over to violet, you would observe that the frequencies and energies are increasing and the wavelengths are decreasing. So the violet waves of the Roy G. Biv or visible light spectrum have the shortest wavelengths and the highest frequencies and energies. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. The infographic is simply fabulous. Turn on your curiosity and explore. The Minds on Physics physics and concept builder activities give you great ways to put the learning into practice. And if you need to brush up on the topic, there's a tutorial page in our tutorial section. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.